Hello quiet ones, welcome back, Mystery 2. I hope you remember to click that thumbs up button, and to subscribe as well. Plus, I hope you enjoyed today's video, which will be linked in the description. As we continue this story written by Shadow Swimmer 77 I found a dark and lonely road. Part 2 I sometimes used to wonder when I'd be driving along a patch of asphalt surrounded by only untamed wilderness. What it must have been like to construct such a road. What it had been like before a man had intruded with our civilization and our machines. What had lived there, I don't wonder anymore. Not since that night when I went left instead of right. The way continued to twist back and forth, up and down, as I wound deeper into the foothills. The trees grew thicker, branches from either side of the road reaching over and almost touching, forming a natural canopy. Twenty feet up that blocked out much of my view of the sky and the stars above. I drove with my high beams on because the idea of streetlights had never entered the minds of whoever built this road. The painted lines were old and not well cared for, and I found myself gradually straddling the faded double yellow partition running down the middle of the two lanes to keep some distance between myself and the trees that increasingly encroached the pavement's edge. I've never been particularly good navigator. My parents used to say it was because I spent my childhood with my nose pushed into a book during car rides, but I personally just think it's because I'm bad at it. So it was that, despite there was no possible way I could be lost, as there were no other roads that I could have possibly turned onto and gotten off track that I more and more frequently found myself checking my phone to ensure I was still on the right path which is how I almost ran into the other car my mind was wandering thinking about the fact that my signal bars had dropped and remained at zero for the last 20 minutes and what possible implications that would mean if I should have some kind of emergency. I raised my eyes back to the road after Google Maps confirmed for probably the 20th time I was still good on my route choice, and after my brain took a beat to process that what I was rapidly approaching was a vehicle stopped in the middle of the lane, slammed my foot on the brake. I stopped in time, but not by much, with maybe five feet sparing my hood from the other car's rear bumper. My heart was pounding in my chest as adrenaline coursed through my body, but my fear quickly gave way to anger. Seriously, what the hell was this guy doing? Not only was he stopped in the middle of the road, but all his lights were off. If I hadn't had my high beams on, there was a good chance I wouldn't have seen him before I was practically on top of him, even if I hadn't been checking my phone. I could feel my pulse beating in the vein on the side of my neck. I'm not somebody particularly quick to road rage. And after a couple quick breaths, I managed to get a hold of myself, not wanting to outright alarm anyone that might still be in the vehicle. I shifted into reverse and backed up about 20 feet, popping my hazards on. That's when I started noticing a few odd things about the stopped car, more than just the fact that the lights were out. Of course it was halted directly in the middle of the road. But that wasn't unreasonable since there wasn't any shoulder to speak of that the driver could have moved it over to. 
the strange thing though was that all the doors were open those on the driver's side even crossing over slightly into the oncoming lane and on further observation I saw an item dropped out onto the road by the rear driver's side door something that appeared to be a child's stuffed animal I considered my options and after a few seconds decided that I would have to go against my better judgment to just keep on my merry way and head outside to get a better idea of what was going on. I said earlier my job doesn't have anything to do with this story, which is mostly true, but before you judge my decisions too harshly, it bears mentioning that I've spent some time in the military. An obligation to help people has been drilled into me over the years and I'd seen enough things while deployed to feel I could handle myself. And so I got out of my car but kept it running. I popped the trunk to grab the flashlight I keep there and left my headlights on so I could see what I was doing. I looked up and down the road hoping to spy signs of other cars approaching. But no luck. Hello? I called up to the other car as I cautiously started my approach, circling around to the left toward the middle of the road so I'd be able to get a look inside before I got too close. Anyone there? No answer. The beams from my headlights helped some but there were enough shadows to still obscure the car's interior. Shining my flashlight through easily determined that no one was inside. I moved closer, stooping down by the rear door to pick up the fallen object off the ground. It was a child's toy, just as I had suspected. A stuffed rabbit with well-worn patches showing signs of frequent love. I frowned. If the folks traveling in the car had hitched a ride with a passerby, they would have taken the rabbit, or the kid would have thrown a conniption. I shut the rear door and moved up to the front. I put my hand on the hood and found it was still warm to the touch. That meant it couldn't have been here terribly long. I slid into the driver's seat to try and figure out if there were some kind of mechanical issue that would have forced the car to stop and was startled to find a set of keys still dangling from the ignition. Pressing the brake, I turned the key and the engine started right up. Headlights and the dome light and the roof springing to life, fuel, oil, temperature, battery, all the gauges look good, not even a check engine light. Curiouser and curiouser. Then I saw the purse in the passenger seat. I picked it up, a normal brown shoulder bag, and briefly rummaged around before finding a wallet inside. Everything appeared to be intact, about $40 in cash, a couple credit cards, gym membership, Sam's club card, the driver license named the owner as Mary Walker, a pretty blonde that had just turned 30 the month before. A couple pictures showed Mary in staged poses sitting on a blanket under a tree whose leaves were turned red and yellow, captured in the thrall of autumn. A huge bearded lumberjack of a man hugged her from behind. A small ponytailed girl with a goofy, over-exaggerated smile on her lap. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, a shiver running down to the base of my spine. Something was very wrong, wrong with this situation. 
I put everything back in the purse and returned it to the seat, turned off the car and got out. Shutting the driver's door behind me, I pulled my phone out of my pocket and dialed 911, holding it over my head to try to get a connection with no luck. Cursing softly, I jammed the red end call button and moved around to the passenger side of the car. I played my flashlight around and noticed that some of the foliage at the edge of the road was bent and trampled like someone had walked through it. I didn't have enough woodcraft to be able to judge how long ago they might have passed, but even then I couldn't imagine any scenario for why they would have gone wandering. Shining my light into the woods, the beam only extended maybe 30 feet through the trees before being effectively swallowed by the greedy blackness. Looking at the flattened foliage, at the stuffed rabbit in my hand, then at the dark trees crowding maliciously my thoughts teetered back and forth between what I should do. I made up my mind. I'd been trained to help people. It was hardwired into my system. There was a child somewhere in the woods. I raised my foot to take a step onto the beaten path. And that's when a white flicker of movement entered the very edge of my flashlight beam. It was Mary Walker. She was naked and walking stiffly, unnaturally, her arms swaying out of sync with the rest of her body, like a marionette manipulated by an inexperienced puppeteer. Hello? Her voice called out. Anyone there? More shapes came into view behind her, shambling along.